Hi, this is Brian Resney, President of Resney Wealth Management. I'm bringing you another important update about the economy and more importantly about your retirement portfolio and ways you can either generate income or help reduce loss in your portfolio in a down market. We've had tremendous amount of questions about what we think 2011 is going to bring for you, the investor, and where you should be positioned. This Sunday show coming up, I will talk about our top 10 strategies, investment strategies, not only for growth but for income, and also our themes for 2011 and where you should be positioned. You should definitely listen to the show, and if you do have questions about your portfolio, of course, you can always visit our website, ResonyWealth.com, and email me a question through our website, and I will answer those questions on the show only as throughout the day, my staff and myself are managing client portfolios and doing daily research. I'm going to talk a little bit about one of the questions I keep getting uh, often. It seems whenever I talk about annuities, it really hits a hot button. I estimate well over 75% of investors have bought an annuity at one time or still own multiple annuities. And most investors really don't understand how devastating some of these can be to your wealth. Is every annuity bad? No. Are 95% of them probably overpriced, overexpensed, and not good for your retirement? I believe so. So those 95% we have to worry about. You probably have one of those in your portfolio. If you really want to know if this annuity is costing you, and these are the questions we repeatedly get, uh, either through email, through the show, or just general phone calls that we do receive or people that we uh, review portfolios for, open the prospectus when you originally bought that annuity policy, or go online. If you can look at your uh, annuity online with a statement, they should have a prospectus at the bottom of the page. Usually, there's a table of contents that'll say, here's the expenses of this annuity. Go there and look for yourself how much these things are costing you. Often, investors are lulled into this false sense of security about what's called a death benefit that is worth more than what they actually put in. Folks, a death benefit is worthless for you to live on. The only money that you should be concerned about is your actual money that can earn a return that you can pull out either for income purposes now or down the road. That's really it. So if you look at that table of contents and if you look at the two various fees that variable annuities charge you, one is the annuity expense just to hold the annuity wrapper as we call it. Those often can hit as high as 4% a year and then the investment sub accounts often can hit as high as 11.5% to 12% a year. Add those two up, you could be over 15% a year. That's why I always talk about the average annuity that we look at and review is well in excess of 4 or 5% a year. With that kind of drag, it's no wonder that between bad market conditions and bad investments with a net variable annuity and and downturns and also the expense ratio that you haven't done well. So make sure you do take a look at that. That's one of the things we're going to talk about uh, on Sunday is making sure you understand all the fees and expenses that you're being charged because unfortunately most of these investment products are manufactured for Wall Street to profit and unfortunately not for you. These fees and expenses will have a detrimental impact on your return, income, and growth. Not to mention, if your portfolio is not actually being managed after you are sold those investments, you're again at the mercy of yourself in order to do your own research and make important, proper decisions about your portfolio. One of the other things I want to talk about is is looking at 2011 Again, we continue to get a lot of questions about what we think the theme or what we think the markets are going to do in 2011. I can tell you this. What you think the markets are going to do is probably what the markets are not going to do. And I'm going to tell you why specifically. GDP growth, which is gross domestic product growth in the U.S., which just came out this morning revised, was at 2.6%. With that kind of uh, GDP growth for this year, and this year should have been very high considering we were coming out of a recession. Typical GDP growth coming out of a recession is usually between 7 and 9%. We are less than a third of that in 2010. I think GDP growth next year is going to be 2.5% on the high side, and I think it's going to be more like 1% to 1.5%. I hope that I'm wrong. If I am wrong, our market trend indicators that we use within our portfolio management will lead us in the right direction, in my opinion. But I think GDP growth is going to be stubbornly uh, low. Unemployment is going to be stubbornly high for many, many years to come. Because of that, you need to be in the areas that are going to have the greatest opportunity. Again, we're going to be talking about a lot of those themes on Sunday show, and we will be talking about some of those in the newsletter then on that following Monday. A couple areas that I really do like. 
we are adding positions to the high yield bond market, the corporate high uh, high yield bond market. We're talking corporate securities, not muni bonds, but corporate uh, bonds on the high yield sector, typically tr uh, triple B rated in that range. These are not investment grade bonds, so they do carry a little bit more degree of risk, but I feel that's going to be an excellent opportunity to, to get some income from some of the portfolio holdings that you do have. I think it's important to start shifting and look at total return in your portfolio for income, which I'll talk more about on Sunday's show. Total return is some growth and income in combination. There's no reason you can't take growth out of your portfolio and convert it into income. I'll talk about that strategy also on Sunday. But as always, remember, if you're unsure what you should be doing with your money, if you do not have an investment strategy, and remember, it's just like a ship without a rudder. If you don't have an actual investment strategy in writing that you are following, what's going to happen is you're going to jump from investment to investment or theme to theme and not actually have a structured portfolio. A ship without a rudder keeps going in a circle and you go nowhere. If you've wondered why maybe your portfolio hasn't done well the last 10 years, it could be a lack of investment strategy. This is Brian Resney. Make sure you do listen to the Resney Wealth Report this Sunday morning from 10 to noon on a station near you. You can check our website for more details. And as always, why don't you start 2011 off correctly? Call our office immediately and schedule a review with me and my staff. Let's sit down, find out why we're different, why we can get your portfolio headed in the right direction with risk management in down markets, and a proper investment strategy. Have yourself a great holiday weekend, and we'll see you on Sunday.